up, y'all? Trey be dipping in the building. You know what time it is. So, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, I made a, a community post probably about two weeks ago. And it said that if the post got 100 likes, that I was going to have story time with you guys about the great Kush Lude. Um, a few of you that are in the Prelude community know about the Grape Kush Lude. This was my previous Prelude. Um, and we're going to get into story time on how I got it and what happened to it and where is it right now. So stay tuned. You too close, baby. Back up. <laughs> All right. So now where was I? The Great Kush Lude. Man. So I'm going to save this part I'm about to tell you for another time. But uh, the Great Kush Lude was my second prelude. And so my first one, I'm not going to get into that one because it's not about this video. is not about the first one. This is about the Great Kush Lude. Um, but it was my second prelude. Um, so, how I got it, pretty much, uh, I think um, I had just bought, I had a, a, a Accord Coupe 2003. I'll throw that up right here. But um, I had an Accord Coupe and I bought an automatic because the job I had at the time, because MR dips didn't exist back then. So, the job I had back then. Back then, uh, I pretty much had to commute like 45, 50 minutes from where I live. And so I wanted automatic because traffic is just dog. In this area, make you want to choke yourself. <laughs> but anyway, so basically I was catching the lewd fever. And all of you know what that is. You know, if you ever sell your lewd or total it or whatever the case may be, lewd fever comes back like instantly. So. Um, I was start looking on Craigslist. This is before like Facebook market before things were easy Was on Craigslist. I was looking at a few a lot of them were overpriced um, And I finally found one and it wasn't running So what I did was I um I actually um, Contacted a dude. He only wanted like 800 for it and basically it wasn't running and I asked him what was wrong with it and I already knew what was wrong so um Basically, I talked him down to about 600 bucks, and I went and picked it up, used my uncle's truck that you saw when we went to go pick up Tevin's Prelude, same truck, same method with the U-Haul trailer. I went down to a place called Culpeper, Virginia, picked it up, and then uh, basically brought it back, and I'll show you some pictures of what it looked like when I first got it. So that's what it looked like right there. Trash. Trash. You know what I'm saying? But... You gonna see what I did with it. So, so once I got it, um, I already had a certain amount of money I had saved up uh, to put into the project. Um, for those of you who have heard of the H22 Euro R, I had heard there was a lot of hype around it um, around that time, about four or five years ago. And um, these JDM warehouses in the area had a bunch of them. So I had put them aside the money for the car and the motor. Um, Funny thing is, the motor that was in there was an H23 non VTEC, and the only thing that was wrong with it was uh, <laughs> the person who had it before me didn't reconnect the the the, um, the ground for the thermostat, and that's like infamous. That's like one of the steps that everybody skips. Um, so it didn't have that, and the main relay was blown. So I replaced those two. Well, I connected the ground and hooked up the main relay. And joint started right up. So I actually sold that motor for I think 500 or 600, and I got my money back for the car pretty much. So I pretty much got the car for free. So yeah, I pretty much got the car for free, which moves me to my next point. You already know now. By the time I got the Prelude, MNR Dips was in the works. You know what I'm saying? I was probably in my first year, first couple months. So you already know what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? So what I actually did was, um, it, the car had a lot of clear coat fail, stuff like that. I sanded the joint down. Um, I was an amateur, so 
my sanding skills was they was trash. Not gonna lie. <laughs> but uh, I did what I had to do, and I the very first color that I put on the lewd. So yeah, the very first color I put on the lewd. Um, now back then, Plasti Dip was. It wasn't what it was today. We didn't have auto flex and all the gloss finishes. So when everybody was chasing chrome finishes, so I called it chrome, but it was actually like an aluminum finish. Like not the shiny part of the aluminum. You ever like pulled out aluminum for you? You got the shiny side and then the other side. It was the other side. So um, this is when um, me, my boy Eric, uh, and my boy Lou um, were pretty much trying to build up uh, this group called DMV Preludes which if you haven't checked that out if you're in the if you're on the east coast and you're anywhere near Virginia go check out DMV Preludes on on the Facebook uh, group pages uh, so we can all link up because summer is here pretty much damn near here and we're gonna be you know what I'm saying don't hey but anyway um, linked up with them man stuff got fun I ended up changing the color to gold which is right there you can see that put wheels on it did some here and there's um the euro r was crazy fun um in the middle of it being gold i decided to turbo my first you know you know what I'm saying? basically do my first turbo build and um i ain't gonna lie i use like 99 percent ebay parts um eric actually ended up giving me a wastegate because my ebay one was, was trash and um, but I actually literally built my first turbo build from scratch and it wasn't pretty but I built it um once it was boosted I want to say like maybe like a month after that that's when autoflex came out you know what I'm saying so I hit it with the that flex you know what I'm saying autoflex which is now we get into the juicy part this is where the grape kush lube was born you know what I'm saying so the Grape Kush Lube. This is what it looked like. I got tons of footage. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna designate this area to the Grape Kush Lube while I talk the rest of the time. Um, long story short, I had the Grape Kush Lube probably for about a year, and um, within that time frame, uh, I actually blew my Euro R pure up, blew it all the way up. And a lot of people ask me how I got into F20Bs. Um, and this is how I got an F20Bs. The Euro R usually costs anywhere between just the motor now, not even the trans. Just the motor usually costs about fifteen to seventeen hundred. So there was no way I was about to spend another fifteen, seventeen hundred on another Euro R. So when I started looking up alternatives, I found the F20B. And I'm not gonna lie to you, F20B was five hundred dollars. So I was like, hey, five hundred dollars sound way better than seventeen hundred. So. Uh, I dropped the F20B in it, then I started doing more research, come to find out the F20B is better for boost because cast iron block, this, that, and the third, yada, yada, yada. But the main thing was the price. I was like, if I'm going to be experimenting with this boost and I might blow some more shit up, <laughs> that I'd rather pay for a $500 motor a few times than a $1,500 motor a few times if that makes sense so a lot of people ask how i got into the f20b game that's how i got into the f20b game so with that being said uh i did end up swapping the motor um my very first motor swap shout out to my man clutch k aka kato aka you know what i'm saying my man kenny you feel me shout out to him if it wasn't for him man i actually would not know shit about swapping motors um he actually literally helped me with my first swap and he he did it in a way to where you know that saying that um you can feed a man for a day but if you teach him how to fish you can feed himself for a lifetime or something like that yeah i might not have said that right but you know what i'm saying um he taught me how to fish man so shout out to kenny man big shout out to kenny um but then once i got the swap game down you know what i'm saying um uh, I was rocking in the Grape Kush Lou, man. I got it tuned a few times, um, and it made uh, about 270 horsepower to the wheels. Um, 
wasn't bad. Now, to me, back then, I felt like it was the fastest thing in the world. Um, but uh, pretty much, uh, I had some issues with it here and there. Like I put a, I had put one of those aluminum uh, oil pans on there and ended up like not creating oil pressure. And it was a whole bunch of mess, man. But uh, I, I had, I was pretty much fed up with it at that point. Um, so by the time I put and figured out all the issues, um, this was the year that Honda Day was up in Jersey. And I had posted it for sale maybe like two months before this. I really was kind of testing the waters to see. And I put, the price I put on it, um, I, I think I had posted it for 6000 or something like that. And I had like two guys come and test drive it. But I, was, I didn't want nobody to come test drive it and blow it up. So I was like, you can come and I'll drive it for you. And if you like it, you know, you could buy it. You could drive it all you want. So the first guy, uh, he came he came down and I actually had issues with um, uh, one of my charge, charge pipes blew off while I was doing a pool for him. And that ended up making him not want to buy it. Not because the charge pipe blew off, but like because he didn't get to experience the fool. And then that's kind of sketchy anyway. Like somebody's taking you for a ride and then some shit pops off. It's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I get it. Fast forward to the next guy, uh, actually the one guy never showed up. Um, and then fast forward to the to the guy who actually bought the car. Um, shout out to Rob, he's actually still driving it till this day. I sold it to him almost two, about two years ago. Maybe more, but a little over two years. And um, he actually just called me the other day, literally uh, a few days ago. And I helped him out with the um, boost cut issue. Um, so shout out to Rob. He came. He didn't ask for a penny less than what I was asking for, man. He paid me straight cash. And the reason why I sold my car in the first place was to get into why I actually was selling it. Um, like I said, I was having the issues with it at first, and once once all the issues were were finished, um, I was actually looking to buy my first house. And um, this is the whole. This is like. 70% of the reason why I sold it. it was like I said I was gonna use that money as a down payment um, on a house the house situation didn't really pan out the way I wanted it to um, and so maybe not too long after I found out we wasn't gonna get the house Lou fever kicked in you know what I'm saying? I was like hey you know what I'm saying by this time I forget uh, um, let's see Oh yeah, that, that kind of gets off the topic of the Great Kush Lou, so I ain't gonna go there. But that's pretty much what happened to the Great Kush Lou, man. And it's rare that you can sell your car, especially something that you got a lot of pride, a lot of joy, and a lot of sentimental value to. And me and him had a long talk before I sold it to him. I said, look, man, if you ever sell this joint, I don't care when, how, or where, call me first. You know what I'm saying? Just in case, I might want to buy it back. And this is before I knew, you know what I'm saying, I was gonna get another prelude, but um, and he's kept his word. I mean, anytime. I mean, matter of fact, he called me a few times for us, uh, you know, just to work out. Because I know I knew the car better than anybody. So why not call? You know, what I'm saying the Prelude Master. He said, but uh, I'm not giving myself that title at this point. I mean, unless y'all comment below. If you, you, know what I'm if you feel that way, I'll take it. But uh, but nah. So basically, uh, I talked to him like I said a few days ago. Literally from this video, maybe three days ago. Uh, I talked to him, and so we might be making a trip to go see the Great Kush Lou. So, you know what I mean? That might be an upcoming video. So if you want to see that video, you want, you want to see the Ultra Instinct Lou meet the Great Kush Lou, comment below and let me know. But uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much what happened. That's the story, and I'm sticking to it. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like story, if like if you watch this video and you like these story time uh, videos, let me know, man. I, I'll be willing. To, I got a lot of stories. I got a story on my first prelude on how I got the Ultra Instinct loot. I got plenty of stories, man. So if you guys like these story time videos, let me know in the comments below. Focus, focus. My man Tevin in the background. You know what I'm saying? We at M and R Dips. AKA the Prelude Headquarters. But anyway, uh, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up, man. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys want to see more videos like that. And uh, you see that right here? And yeah, go ahead and click that, man. That's the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on the next one. The grand opening. I come through a 
start smoking shit. Creeping up while I'm approaching you.